And here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table at reallibertymedia.com on this uh, Saturday, the 10th of October, 2020. 10-10-2-0-2-0. Whoa. What, what a strange number to hit. And thanks a lot. Grim Mary got me a place to play, but uh, Miss Mary today had some secret Grammy Mary stuff going on at the last minute. And she had to pass on the show. So uh, I'll do an hour of something. Mostly the stuff going on right now is just really a drag. Anyway, so for the uh, chatting experience of the weekend, bots and bodies in the RLM are. We got Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Asmo. They were just chitter-chattering about some shipping things. Hmm. Uh, Chloe, Dan Van Meter, Flash somebody, Frumpy Work, Jays, Nines, Jays, Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Works, hey, the bubble, Trust No One, uh, Vanna White, W4DKV, Weather Dork, with a K, <clears throat> Phantom, CC66, Chloe, Cyborg Noodle, Ensiv, Kiss, Matt, WJ2002, Sas, Samadas, The Holiest Roger, and Zpix. Those are your playmates for this here Saturday on the Dork Table today. And, wow, what's been... I was really surprised when Mary canceled on me today. Wasn't expecting to do a solo, so I guess we'll do about an hour or so. Call it a day, because, what a world we're in. <laughs> some, some of the shit that's going on. <laughs> and <clears throat> there are a ton of people that believe what they're doing is real. Hmm. Now, I can always go, well, read a book. Sadly, if you read the right book, you get the wrong crap. And you find out the wrong information. And then you end up, uh, you know, driving your car wearing a mask on your way to go get a vasectomy. So, <laughs> the world is, let's see. Today, I'm going to call our Dork Table podcast, I'm Sensing a Pattern Here. And hopefully, I can find a few in interesting things to me and her about, <laughs> but not likely, because mm. uh, things that cross my mind aren't popular, like the corona mandates, they're, they've been making commies since 2015, <laughs> and the public doesn't, doesn't have the wherewithal to know when they've been had, so they're easily duped. Anyway, let me write that into the notes so I got some reference. Corona mandates. What a joke. What what the hell is a corona mandate anyway? There's no such thing as a freaking corona the way they're describing it. Okay. They're just doing what they always do. They tell you a piece of something and then they add that to Yeah, it's like Frankenstein. They're digging up shit. <laughs> it's all dead. They gotta sew it together with their you know, sew and stuff. <laughs> and then they're gonna have a big electrical storm come. Frankenstein, <laughs> and they, they've got they've got a Frankenstein. They called it COVID nineteen. <laughs> Brilliant. These people have whatever whoever these people are. I don't, I don't know Doctor Grouchy, <laughs> but I've read his opinions, and he he's smart. He covers both sides of the damn thing. He don't pick a side. Well, he picks a side. And then he forgets he picked that side and he joins the other side. Then he forgets he did that and he goes back to the first side. Hmm. Now they call this politics. And I call it, get the hell away from me with your nonsense. <laughs> but sadly, we're surrounded by society. And the vast majority of society <laughs> They seem to be loving them some COVID-19. 
Now, I could understand all this drama and panic and the world's going to end and shit. People were like dying or something. But the way that I understand what happened is they made people who were susceptible to flu-like virus symptoms ill on purpose. Hey, wait a minute. I think I'm getting a, a message from the, the heavens above. Uh-oh. No, it's just a tease from Gra- Gramsci. She's probably just sitting there just laughing away. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway. Hmm. So, I don't know. I guess folks don't know the difference between a a serious law and a rule. You know, or... A mandate. Hmm. I guess they're the same thing if they come out of the same pie hole from the same lion sack of shit. <clears throat> but I don't trust the system. It, it, people. Oh, man. I know a few people on the RLM that share my enthusiasm for Mother State. We would like to see Mother State get on a boat and go far, far, far away up. <laughs> and, you know, take all the voters with it. Because that's not for me. Hmm. So life puts me right in the middle of Denmark. Uh, well, not in the middle. In the middle. I'm on, on the crust. So, but, you know, in the sense of instead of being where I'm from, <laughs> life brought me here. And it couldn't have picked a better time to be here. There are not a lot of countries on the kind of, on the the world stage right now that are visiting material. (laughs) It's like the last thing anybody in their right mind would want to do would be travel somewhere and go mix with the people and have some fun. (sighs) But, uh, hmm. I don't know. The, The fun seems to be all played out. Now they're getting into, uh, well, the biggest Political politics. Uh, hmm. I call them selections, so I got tongue twisted. <clears throat> the greatest political election of the last <clears throat> maybe three or four billion years is coming up. <laughs> it's like a month away. Four weeks. Four short weeks. And then. Everybody gets to complain for four more years about how shitty things are because (coughs) voting didn't seem to help. (coughs) But, well, guess what? That's the system that we have. And people say, well, have you got a better system? Hmm. And I would look them in the face today and say, playing three-card money with a rigged deck is more fair than government. Government doesn't even offer you the illusion of, you know, freedom. <laughs> freedom is a, it's available to you if you pay the fee to be free. No fee, no free. Huh. Unless, of course, you call living on Venice Beach in a tent on the, you know, on the sidewalk free. That, that it could be freedom. The last bat, you know, picture. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Uh, freedom. Living under the stars. Near the stars. <laughs> you know, by the store where they go in there and spend a lot of money buying shit. Doing their commerce right in front of you, you communist. <laughs> I don't know what to make of all this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's surreal, is what it is. My reality, day with physical life and all that, doesn't compare to the internet. The internet is like HBO, Showtime, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook all rolled up in one and thrown at you at one time. But, I'm surviving it. I mean, I think I just don't have an understanding of this corona thing because 
for all the time it's gone on, I've yet to meet anybody that even knows anybody that's been a victim of it, to be honest with you. So, for, wow, since February, I've been crying hoax, 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 hoax. We are living in a fraud. Eh, okay, look at the results around you. You know, oh, well, people are wearing masks, and they're being locked down. All these things are stopping nature from doing what nature does. And I, no, see, when they started this crap with the laboratory in China, and bat soup, you know, they had such lame stories in the beginning to start with. But what they had on their side was 40, 50, 60 years of virus movies to back up their story. <laughs> Most people will listen to the story and stop. That's the end of that. Okay, there's a virus. No, no, Nothing more to be told. And other people, they demand things like a high death count, proof of the you know, global crisis that you're harping on, shit like that. And then there's some of us. <clears throat> I won't name them by name, but they knew who they are. Oh, yeah, Cirque and her mom were just going out, and the going out is on the other side of my radio room where I'm rooming radio in. There you go. Mm. Nothing real exciting going on. <clears throat> I mean, maybe if I was living in a foreign country where people spoke English, I would have a lot of shit to complain about. In fact, I might be the most unhappy guy on the radio if that was the case. But no. <laughs> so, Because hmm. uh, Cirque's nephew is turning 16 this week. Good Lord. And uh, they went to celebrate on the weekend so people could get together. Because on his birthday, there would be no way to do it. And I don't know how many laws they broke or mandates or whatever, but they went over there and they had a party for the kid. He's going to be 16, I think, on Wednesday. Hmm. Happy birthday, Ollie. Anyway, let me think of, maybe I could give you guys some tips on avoiding mother state. No, I, I don't think anybody really, <clears throat> I don't think they really appreciate the concept of ditching the state, that usually brings a negative. I'm not even going to call that in the notes, ditching mother state. Because uh, mother state is not your friend. Wow. Mother state is like, what, what would I compare mother state to? Hmm. Just that whole illusion of authority personified. You know, when you put a body in that idea that somebody else is deemed fit by the state you live in to come over and stomp a little sense into you and get out of hand, by God and country. Hmm. Now, once upon a time, these things would be like, you know, when you got violent, or maybe you stole something from somebody and you knocked them down and tried to leave, those things. But now, <clears throat> I have seen videotape of Big cops attacking little women for not wearing a mask in public because of this corona hoax. Now, with all the information in front of us, all the experience we've had, it should be obvious by now to just about any idiot that one more time the government played us. And they'll go, well, why? What are they going to get out of it? Well, it's a slow process. They do things in... 20-year blocks. <laughs> they plan. These people are so sneaky that the people they fuck the hardest seem to be the ones that defend them the most. I wouldn't defend a government from anybody, but I don't feel I get anything from a government, so there's no reason for me to be defending a government. But, wow. Some people find, I, I might have at one point, when I was, you know, American, when you're born on this bit of dirt, this, that, and other, blah, blah, blah. Then I went and started traveling to other countries. Hmm. 
And all of a sudden, all that stuff that I had been told didn't seem to be so true <laughs> anymore. I wasn't, I was a rebellious American at an early age. And I carried my rebellion with me everywhere I went. Everybody knew it. There was no going, hey, I wonder if this guy follows the rules. There's not really much doubt about any of that. But, uh, <clears throat> but here we are where now all you have to do to be a threat to society is, now this is great. I heard this on, I think, on the, uh, on the Freaker's Ball. Be barefaced in public and you will suffer the wrath of Karen. Karen will degrade you, shred you, and spit you out. Just like that. Well, I've yet to physically see this. Story's good. I mean, damn. Uh, and what, but what is, see, what's the point of all this uh, masking and uh, slowing things down? I mean, who are they fucking kidding? They can't run an ice cream stand, but the government is going to mandate you into surviving a global pandemic. I, I don't see how that would be possible if there was a global pandemic. People would be killing each other to get a cure. Oh, that's sweetheart. I can I can hear. They can hear you out there. How long you to be? Bye. Poor Hannah, she's missed you. <laughs> They're taking the dog for a little stroll down to the beach. Grim Nurse says, hey, Cirque. Hey, hmm. So all the comedians are having a good time. But, yeah, there's really not much of a, of a audience for avoiding Mother State. But I still, when I ask people, you know, what, what is the benefit? And I think the benefit of state, if you got to sum it up in just a few sentences, would have to do with, I don't want to go to jail for not paying my taxes. And that's a universal cry around the world from all kinds of places I've lived in. Boy, people, they got this thing about, well, I could lose everything I own if I don't pay my taxes. And uh, well, really, then what do you got? <laughs> then the, the arguments would flow, never ending to this day. So I stopped asking. You know, if you think you own your house, good luck to you, pal. That You deserve to own it. <laughs> um, the little bits of information that I've gotten out of Larry Woods on Thursdays. What that shows me is that I'm not the only one that thinks something is amiss. You know, what was the old saying? Something is rotten in Denmark, in the state of Denmark. I believe is a proper quote. Uh, <laughs> real famous. But I wonder why they took all the attention off uh, the Dutch, because they're notorious for being backstabbing thieves, like the Jews, or maybe the Americans, or the English, or the French, just about anybody you call a country. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, bye. Nice seeing you again. All the um, all the people that, that supposedly look up to you know, royalty. <laughs> I think they got a, a, a bolt just a little bit, maybe too tight. Maybe that bolt's a little too loose. It's not holding still. <laughs> I'm not really positive. But something is amiss with this celebrity worship. You know? <laughs> if you look up to these these jackoffs in the public eye that they're better than you and they're what? they're richer than you. <laughs> Whatever rules they want for you, <laughs> they don't want them for them. <laughs> Priceless. Got a whole, two parties of these butt nuggets. Now, the Republicans are basically about, I don't know, 
I would say out of the two is the more leave me alone and let me count my money. <laughs> and the other side is all about counting your money. <laughs> Whoever you are. They don't even care. They'll let anybody in their group as long as they bring money. Then you're a Democrat. I hope I made that clear to my radio listening participators out there in the electronic world. Because it's really a weird concept in the first place. Politics. You know, Mary went and did the research on what the words mean and has over the years told me. And sometimes, I mean, you might find this hard to believe, but I pay attention to what Mary's talking about. And one one of the things that really got my attention is the word government. When you break it down, govern, that's not very nice. That's like old Greek. What was it, Greek or Hebrew? Something like that. One of those stuff them up your ass languages from the old days before people could lie. As well as they can now. You know, like with the religious stuff, they just made it up. But hey, God said so. Gotcha. And then, boom. Hey, look at all these people are going to give us money if we tell them where to go. <laughs> and they call it religion. <laughs> and then they branched off so they could get everybody. And so you can belong to a religion of your own choosing. But choosing no religion not a real choice. <laughs> so, I find the whole thing a little bit more like they try to take you hostage as young as they can, so you'll believe it as long as you will. And why do I... I would say things like that because hmm, no physical proof would be the very first thing to jump onto the page, right? Right? And the very first thing that the religious claim is faith-based. So, hmm, no physical proof strikes one more time. There you go. In my opinion. But, see, then there's people that, like, see Jesus and toast. <laughs> they got, I don't know, uh, statues that cry blood. All kinds of crazy. The crazier thing that, well, how do you say this? Ah, the crazier something sounds to somebody else, then when you're talking about it, I think for that split where you're talking about that few minutes, or whatever, you make it real. Whether it's real or not, if you're talking about it, hey, it exists because we said so. <laughs> Just like taxes or laws or right and wrong, all these eight shit fucking just extreme knowledge that we have, you know, because we're so smart. So we're going to value stuff, and put judgments on crap, make you pay your fair share. All this, all this stuff for, for you, you know. Nobody ever just comes right out, well, the Jews are more honest about it than anybody, and says, that'll be an extra 20% because I had to get up off my chair over there. I was comfortable with my stuff. And now i got to wake. And people just nod. And yeah, it's a fucking Jew. Pay the fucker. He'll never stop talking. And I believe, in a sense, that that kind of sums up where we are politically in a nutshell. Because all these countries... They have uh, spies, and then they've got people embedded openly in their political structure for everybody to look upon and judge. And people look upon them, and then they're told, say one fucking word about them being Jewish, and we're going to nail you to a tree and beat you to the homeless, fucker. And they think, hey, wait a minute, I better not say nothing bad about the Jews. Ooh, and this is a reality that we are in right now amidst the COVID. And what else have we got? Uh, money problems. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can call this a collapse before people just stop listening. <laughs> but eh. 
I have to call it something. And I didn't want to call it Steve, so I called it the COVID is the front for the financial reset. Oh, collapse, reset, whatever you want to call it. They got the, the Federal Reserve Bank has got the debt so high now that they can't even pay the interest on the debt. And they want to borrow more money. <laughs> so, it's over. <laughs> it's funny as hell, I mean, to me. Uh, but I'm not in that big finance game. Five trillion dollars a day. <laughs> Can't even count that on. <laughs> Wouldn't even know what I was trading. But, you know, they've got the internet webs so they can convince all the people all the time. <laughs> Tell them all a good story. Hey, you ain't going to believe this, but it's true. I saw it on the internet. Ah, uh, I saw it. I wonder what that really means in court. I saw it. <laughs> court. We're so fucked. Hey, is Beetle out there? I don't know if Beetle's on the RLM tonight. Probably not. Probably out there hustling, making some dough. But he's got a saying. He says, we're all fucked. Hmm. And in a collective you know, sense of the word. Oh, yeah, I agree with that completely. Society has failed. <laughs> it's not it's not worth participating in it. If the things that they're showing me on the interwebs are true, <laughs> but they got video to go along with it, so it's pretty hard to go, hey, I wonder what film this is pulled out of. But uh, then I got people like Dee Jackson in Scotland to keep me up. Uh, up to date on what's going on in this whole country. And like myself, Deke is not a shy fella about how he feels about this hoax. Or the people participating in it. Or the companies that are going to score while all the other companies go fucking under. It, you're just being had. Right, right in front of everybody, they're lying to us all. And to consolidate power about money and greed and power, all those things that you know make a human being sleep good at night <laughs> after they've had you know twelve or thirteen gin and tonics so they their minds will shut down from all that crap that they had to do all day. It's a vicious cycle, I'm telling you now I'm a smoker. I don't think that i I smoke. To cope with life. Uh, when I drink, I think I drink at certain times to do exactly that. Cope with life. Get the fuck out of my skull and be crazy, man, crazy. But, <coughs> eh, it's not, a, it's an acquired taste alcohol. Where pot, boy, the minute I looked at a bag of pot, I went, hey, I like you. You're my friend. But that's all. that. Uh, we'll get into that some other time. But I guess the, the comparison to alcohol from pot is so different. And then when people mix them together, well, I don't know. Some people are like dancing on a razor blade doing it. and Some people are dancing with a bull with a red cape. And they got swords and they're sticking them in the back. Crazy, but Pete, but Pete, Pat, marijuana, Mary Jane, by itself is the most harmless. Uh, <sighs> what would you call it? It's not a drug. Well, see, the definition of the word includes it through a technicality because they change it constantly. And at one point, correct me if I'm wrong when you wordsmiths listening, but I do believe that uh, a drug was a manufactured product. It wasn't, you couldn't just grow it out of the ground. Hey, look at, I got a drug. No. It's like the poppy, you know, the poppy plant. Until you process it to get the powder, you have nothing. But with weed, it's a different story. You just pull the bud off, start chewing on it, and the next thing you know, you're in Denver, you know, 
trying to get home. <laughs> that was a bad joke. Uh, anyway, I just don't think that potheads are uh, violent. I don't think potheads are irrational. Um, sadly, I do believe a lot of people who vote smoke pot recreationally. And they are misled by that whole notion that you're getting out of your mind for a while and then you got to come back and play the game some more. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. See, they don't really know they're playing the game. They think they're being released from something for a period of freed. Ooh, look, I have the freedom to go do this for a short period of time. And then i got to go get back, put my chains back on, and go back and do the slave thing. Sometimes I gotta admit, when I was a slave, financial slave, I, I enjoyed what I did for to get to be a slave. So if, to find out if I had found out back then, I don't think it would have bothered me that much. Because I always I was taught young to try to never do something for for money that you're not willing to do just because you want to do it. You would do it for free or a favor. If you're not willing to do something like that, then don't even take it on as a job. You'll quit. Hmm. So there you go. You know, because I was never cut out for till I got old to settle down and be responsible in any. Well, I never bothered with it. You know, it seemed it, but I always had that uh, freedom to walk. Let's see, where are we going to go? Freedom to leave. I don't have that anymore because I got married. And the freedom to go is gone, whether I want it or not. I mean, it's in the contract. I mean, the verbal agreement we made. And, you know. and then me, me and Sir both are pretty much not, uh, not into litigation. I, I would never in a million years want to sue anybody for anything. Uh, I would avoid the fight however the fuck I had to to avoid that parody court, you know, that magical mystery tour with a judge and a bunch of thugs who were going to throw you in a cage if you say the word backward and wrong, whatever the hell game they're playing that day. And there's enough information to let you know that this is something that you have to experience to believe it. I give it that. But it's there. It's there for your entertainment should you choose to engage it. And I think, deep down inside anyway, that we bring on our own engagement. So times where I've, I've had a, <clears throat> a foul plug you know, in my engine, that was my engagement. So, hmm. made a mistake. Ooh. Hmm. But... I don't know. I don't think I killed anybody or I don't think the damage that I did in, in my history, you know, as an individual human being, I don't think it's all that bad compared to other people. And some of these people, they're all fictional characters to me. And when I look at it, think it through, then I start to wonder if any of that's true. I was going on the other time about Manson. Sometimes I just... Uh, I have my doubts about the system telling us the truth about anything. Complete bullshit. And if it's not complete, it's got enough bullshit in it that if you could isolate the truth, the truth wouldn't matter at the end. It doesn't make any difference. And, I don't know, people harp on, oh, look at the history. Hmm. Well, that's a little bit hard to do in a way because right at the end of the... Uh, the worst time in L.A. To, to grow up would probably have been 67 to 69. And right at the end of that, they caught Charlie Manson, and then they started opening up all these uh, nightclubs. Made them, made, not Maybe not opening up, but the, the uh, interest, the tension started to go on. The rock scene, this, that. I mean, the newspapers guide us at those, in those times, through those days, step by step to the next thing. In the TV. But if it was, you know, in print, in those days, we we were so gullible because we were raised to believe the written word. <laughs> what we weren't told is, well, some of it's true. Just 
not all of it. Dig a little bit. You'll figure it out. 10 or 20 years. And by the time you figure it out, tell somebody else, by the time you get done talking, they'll think that you belong in a padded cell with a bag of walnuts because you're fucking nuts. <laughs> well, apparently the, uh, the state has a formula, maybe, or a way to present their stories to the people that sell it. And the more I watch it on the internet, you know, I see the internet reruns of certain TV shows or movies. <laughs> what else? But all that programming is right there being done to me in past tense, I can see. But w when it was actually live, I wasn't participating. So, hmm. got lucky on that TV kind of thing. But the internet's a whole other story. The internet has got its claws in me pretty good. I like my uh, electronic world games. The lack of having to deal with people is kind of interesting. And this COVID, man, I can make, make the best of the COVID if I want to. I'm just insulted that people are so naive that they'll go along with this hoax to you know, keep it alive. If they do indeed know the truth, why are they doing what they're doing? And if they're doing it because they're trying to conform so they can you know, have a, a peaceful society, that's about, it's not a very good reason to me, but it's better than, uh, uh, it's better than, well, if I don't, I'm going to die. You know? I'll, I'll take the, I guess in this case, we're going back to the lesser of two evils. You know, comply to get by or, Oh, if I don't wear the mask, I could get the corona and die. Help, help. What do I do? You know, they call them choices. Now, I remember when it was my choice to uh, live my life how I wanted to as far as if I wanted to go into a, an area that had a, a risk, you could get malaria or something like that. There was no mandate to... Wear a, sh uh, wear a mask, get a shot, wash your hands every 20 minutes, and all this other crap. It was a time when... What did I call that? Well, we just lived. We exist. You know, do things. And apparently, the future, what the future holds for us as a collective doesn't involve an individual. Everything's going to be accounted for. You know, on a big, on a bigger thing, there are the borders, shit like that. There won't be nobody crossing no borders for a while. <laughs> and if they do, well, then you know one thing. They got government approval to do it because the government's all over everything. Or they want you to at least have that, uh, that belief in the authority. So it'll, you know cut you down from threatening them and you'll stay home and you'll do the mandates, whatever the mandates are today. They'll change. And if this was real, think about this for five minutes, then the whole globe would have panicked and we would have had been fighting amongst our, ourselves trying to find an answer to fix it. But nothing was ever broken except for the system telling us what to do through a pandemic. If they had never had done any of it, none of this would have happened, except if I'm correct about the financial reset, and they had to do something. Now, according to the internet, this Fauci guy did start this back in, uh, on paper to uh, patent something, patent a damn virus or whatever, in 2015, so... Hmm. Do a little looking on the internet about what's going on. If you, you know, if you still believe it, I, I guess if you believe it, you do, and you're nothing's going to change that except uh, maybe you croaking of whatever this is. But whatever it is, it's not what they're telling you it is. That's obvious by the damn death stats. Crying out loud, they had to apologize how many different times over, you know, cooking the books on the death stats to make it look like COVID when in fact. <laughs> It was anything but COVID. Well, so 
I don't know, they're clever people. They figured out how to make the overall population believe okay, that they can inhale dead tissue and get a respiratory infection from it. And I don't know, that's not the information I've, I've been informed with. And if you're curious, go to ucy.com and look up Clint Richardson. I think I said his name right that time. And he's got plenty of information and opinion about medical <laughs> Rothschilds. Uh, he's got, in fact, he's got his own opinion about the God concept that's kind of interesting. I, I don't mind listening to him when he goes off. Some people uh, push me away with it. Clint, not so much. But he's a very broad uh, spoken. He seems to believe every freaking thing he's telling me when I listen to him. I go, wow, I think he believes that shit. Let's check this out and see what exactly he's going on about. And as a result of doing so, I come out of the uh, Clint Richardson listening time, I come out of it with a, an opinion about, wow, we've been reamed by the Rothschilds again on this medical thing. <whistles> wow, holy coincidence, Batman. This man owns all the freaking information. He teaches all the schools. Wow, no wonder people are using radiation to cure something like cancer. <laughs> How about the opiates? I mean, come on, people. What is it going to take to uh, look at the truth and just go, wow, okay, I got screwed. How do I go forward and get unscrewed? Well, that, that might be going too far. Maybe that's dork table material. You know, only a dork can think of getting unscrewed because, as we all know in the adult world, once you've been fucked, there ain't no being unfucked about it. It's a done deal. It happened. You have to do one of two things. Either you accept what happened or you complain about it for the rest of your lives until somebody forms a group and puts somebody in jail for harming you. <laughs> that's, that's what we got. Uh, revenge cult. You know, the punishment crowd. Hang them high. Shoot them in the face. Don't fuck around here. <laughs> anyway. I know, a dork table without Mary is just not the same. It's like talking to myself and without a mirror. <laughs> so there you go. That makes it even weirder. At least if I had a mirror, I could go, hey, I know you. But let's see, what am I through my notes? What have I got here? Anything interesting? Mm. Not really much. Uh, I'm just beside myself. Eh, what can you say? Dorky. Hey, Quartz Kevlar Tech. There's a word for you. Um, well, I'm a happy guy in the, you know, on the 10th of October in 2020, and I opened up the internet webs, and everything is just negative. 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 I have to look for things on purpose to find something on the YouTube, the YouTube, because I like using it. It's easy for me. And the bit shoot stuff is so, wow, overwhelming because they're, they've got the market on the honesty thing going on right now. And they're really small. So bit shoots out there and you know, they got a few thousand people that are pretty amped up. You know, they're watching the links that I'm seeing that say the couple of thousand hits on them. And they're believing or agreeing or whatever with the person speaking. Hmm. Wow, I sense the problem out there in uh, happy ass land. People are up in arms. They're very upset. But somehow, magically, through all this chaos, drama, pandemic, and all this other shit, the most important thing is whether Joe or Donnie is going to be in the White House in January. The world is, I mean, every fucking breath we take, 
is all related and connected to this particular election of a POTUS. Why? They say that every freaking time. Now, I got to admit, every do, every time they do change POTUS stuff, the chains get a little tighter when that fucker leaves the office. But, hmm, what could, I don't know, what's left for Trump to fuck up? He's just about screwed the horse on any topic you can imagine except for, uh, I hear he's shooting pretty good on the golf course when they're not having a hurricane. But outside of that, here, we'll go in the notes. What has Trump got left? Whoops, could type better. To destroy. And that's, I mean, if you're going to look at it in terms of representation, leadership, and all these crappy bullshit political ideas, then I would say at this point in history, Donald Trump is the absolute worst sitting POTUS that you've ever had. And you've had some doozies. I mean, they must have had some doozies way before I was you know, old enough to read and understand what a president is. Hey, what is a president anyway? <laughs> a president is the guy that the Federal Reserve Bank tells to tell you. There you go. Because they're his mama and daddy. The FRB. But, you know, they don't... Uh, they don't allow them to talk about the banking. I don't think that. It's a secret. It's just not encouraged that people uh, understand the details of high finance. Currency, fiat money, that. High finance. Buying a house. It's magic. You go to the bank. The bank says, hmm, how much money do you have? How much money will you pledge to me if I... Grant you your wish and give you the loan. And then you, you know, do your banking prayer, whatever. You show them your numbers. And then the banker goes, ah, oh, I like you. I think we will give you the loan. And then he pushes a couple of buttons on a screen. And there's the money. So, my question, where does the money come from? <laughs> An average Joe out there doesn't understand the question. So, eek. It's a really short conversation where I get walked away from and I still don't find out where the money comes from. <laughs> so I made up my own answer and I decided there ain't no money. If there was, we wouldn't be living like we're living on Earth. Earth would be a, a far grander planet without the greedy idiots that are pretending that we have money. They're pretending they have money and we have crumbs, but no, nah, that, that's uh, my disappointment in the system is very complicated, I suppose. It's not as easy to explain, even on a radio show, <laughs> where I'm free to free flow and you know, let my little jawbone go where it wants to, but some of these things are, you know, they're seemingly complex but it's just a magic show they're doing things that don't work for one they work on paper so that shows you they work that's enough for these educated monkeys right i did it on the notes okay now you make that work in physical life whoops because it doesn't it's just art and you know well it's another one of those very uh, subjective topics, the reality that you're in, because we all think we're in the same reality somehow. Oh, well, then, there you go again when we all think, but people seem to behave as though they think I'm in theirs, but I don't always recognize them. <laughs> so, Sometimes I may be in their reality, but by God and country, they ain't mine. <laughs> I don't even know they're there. How do you recognize something you don't see? Ooh. And, well, that's where my mind goes. I, I, I just think we're a bunch of electronical things bouncing off each other in the long run. 
And then they messed it all up with this consciousness that everybody's got to explain to you what your consciousness is so that you'll never figure it out what yours is because you're completely in tune with theirs. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, for fuck's sake. I just know what they tell me I should do my own good so that I could be a good citizen. <laughs> I think the last thing in the world I would want to be at this point in my adult life would be a good citizen. Hmm. Now, I wonder if that encourages me to be a bad citizen, because that's where we're taught. You know, oh, yeah, well, if you're not good, then you must be bad. Well, maybe you're neither. <laughs> maybe that's just something that we make up so that we can not like somebody else or like somebody else, you know? The judgment game. Ooh, look at that. My wife draws. Ah, I draw too. Wait, wait a minute. We have something in common now, don't we? See? And when these little, the things that we believe come together, I suppose, then that's when shit happens. Because I'm one of those folks that has ideas. I think of things. Oh, blah, 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 blah. My mind's going, tra la 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 And then, sometimes, not so much now in my 60s, but when I was younger, I would just wake up in the morning and make whatever the hell I'd been thinking about all day the day before, or the two days before, and I'd start it, just start doing it, whatever it was. Now, ah, I'm kind of, uh, I think I'm enjoying my uh, COVID, and the luxury of not having a... Uh, schedule to meet every day. Ooh, how nice that is. Cirque, not so much. She's still got that job thing. But on the good side, she gets to do it upstairs in her house. And got her dog at her feet when she's working. and you know, The comforts of home, shit like that. Things that uh, I guess we're learning to acquire a taste for. She had like the birthday party to go to. And it's fun for her, but then after some point, then she starts to get, oh, I want to go home. <laughs> you know? And I've never been like that. I, I don't think I'm like that now. If I went to Copenhagen, I'd want to stay in Copenhagen until I was done being in Copenhagen. So I don't even start the cycle in the first place. Now, my wife, she's not so much like me. <laughs> Lucky me. You know, she comes home at 8 o'clock. On a Saturday night, when I'm doing radio, she could have stayed out. Wouldn't have bothered me any. But no. And we had coincidences like that on, on our holidays when we first met. I was going out somewhere on New Year's Eve, and she was going out. And I went out, and then all of a sudden I just decided, ah, I don't really want to be out. I'm going to go home. I think I just spend this time by myself and just... It's not that big a deal. It's just a holiday. And I get home, and all of a sudden, there's Cirque on the, available on the computer. <laughs> she was supposed to go out somewhere, too. <laughs> but the little wavelength tweaks, you know, little quirks in, in our history, kind of, they were different than other people. So I, I paid a lot of attention to it. Now we've been together for a while. And I'm sure, as I get older, if anything, I get more stubborn. Co-inky dinks, Rob says. <clears throat> I don't know. I think, personally, I think that we create we create our own, you know, life. However, you explain that to somebody else. Your circumstances, they're a product of what you're, you know, what you're doing in life. So there you go. Oh, yes, yeah, stubborn. Well, and especially if I'm right. Now, if you can prove me wrong, I'll take the Larry way on that one. If I'm wrong and, I, and you can show me where I'm wrong, I go, holy fuck, I was wrong. I'm glad you showed me. Otherwise, you kept doing it wrong. That's not good. But if I'm right and you're showing me the wrong way and you're being stubborn about it, what am I supposed to do? And some of these topics that we... Ah, we pretend to chatter about on the internet webs. They're, 
one-liners, two-liners. It's not really a conversation. It's more like, uh, I don't know, texting. <laughs> Similar to that to me. And when you get into the links where you can sit down and listen to, some, to somebody else explain something with detail over a period of time, sometimes these topics are huge. They take hours. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, and they go, oh, I get that. Uh, other times, it's a three-minute length of watching a, a cat, you know, climb out of a bathtub. Whatever whatever it may be at the moment that pleases the human being, who knows? But I think we got all these, <laughs> like, shitty value systems to, to judge by. And it's just a waste of time. It's a way to take me out of me and put me trying to get into you. And, eh. I don't mind the comparison thing so much, but I don't want to be somebody else. I I want to still in this life, no matter what it looks like to other people, it's mine. And I wouldn't want to be anybody else but me <laughs> through this. Um, am I on coke? No. I have not done the powders in many years. Many and many years. But I did enjoy them when they were available. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Freedom, baby! Break the law. That's what freedom is. Sadly, when you're free is when you're outside of all the, the confines of this stupid, hopeless, fucking society bullshit. These people are insane. They want you to get tested for a coronavirus to travel to anywhere. <laughs> It's insane. It's nuts. And especially because of what it does. It doesn't do a whole lot. And there's lots of illnesses that you can seriously get out there, breathing other people's air, that wearing that mask ain't going to stop those either. <laughs> You're still susceptible to that. But the truth of that doesn't matter because they're pitching you this dead Cells theory. <laughs> what would you call it, Rob? The dead cell theory, <laughs> virus. Yeah, it doesn't make doesn't make sense to me. To all you other people out there, and you know, mask wearing, lockdowning, uh, don't touch me, so I'll die. People, <laughs> those. Where were you a year ago before all this crap started? How the hell did, did any of these wine and sacks of shit? How do they manage to survive a freaking day in the real world out in New York without having to wear a fucking mask on their face? I, I don't understand it. They were dropping like flies way back then, too. <laughs> Same fucking thing, except they added the riots and the violence and the looting and government bailouts to all their fucking buddies. Give the population a crumb to argue over. Make sure those bankers are fed. That's the important stuff. How much are we going to give the bankers this time, Nancy? Oh, I don't know. $2.3 trillion. And these idiots throw numbers around like this. Like, it is cool and wonderful. Let's print it. Oh, what's in the latest one? They got another. <laughs> a COVID stimulus. Bill. <laughs> wow. Okay, I don't know who's paying for all of this drama, but apparently there's going to be a price to pay eventually. And it, they just can't keep promising the world and postponing the evictions. And if you wear a mask, we won't throw you in jail. But if you, what the fuck happened? I, I don't. Okay. Well, I'm, this is what happens when I do a dork by myself. Uh, I'm calling it a show. Thanks a lot, everybody, for playing along with me today. Of course, I was a little bit I don't know, on the negative side, like I was doing a, in a perfect world, because I miss Miss Mary to make me giggle. So let me get my buttons all squared away here so I can close this thing out and give Grim back the uh, RLM radio feed. We've got it worked out to a science. Let me tell you, just push a button. Click, click. Click, click. So here, we, let me see here. I'm almost done, folks. And 
that. Shoot. 